This reader interview is sponsored by the patrons of the Rereading Wolf podcast. <laughs> All right, so now we have Marcos Govea. Marcos started talking to us on email with these great longish email conversations and theories, and then he began posting them on the Facebook group and on Reddit, and so he's bound to have some good stuff for this little conversation. How are you doing, Marcos? Uh, I'm doing great, thanks. I'm, I'm used to hearing your voice, but not responding to it in, in, in live. <laughs> this is fun. Oh, really? On my favorite podcast, I scream at them. <laughs> All right. Well, let, okay. Let's do the let's do the five questions. Sure. First encounter with a wolf story. So I was, I was thinking I have I have a typically tricky wolfish answer to this. Um, so, uh, my father was very much an SF reader in the seventies and eighties when uh, Wolf's big stuff started to come out, and was a very early adopter. And actually even wrote some reviews for Fantasy Review and uh, the New York Review of Science Fiction of, of some of uh, Wolf's things. And so I remember from a very young age hearing about Severian. <laughs> like, I think I was six or seven and my father was telling me some very redacted moments from uh, <laughs> the book of the New Sun. So in some ways, my first Wolf story happened before I, I read any Wolf. I was I was very much ready waiting for my chance to to get into it but i think the other answer is i would i really remember you know it's probably not the first thing i read but i remember nightside the long sun coming out and that was the first long form wolf that i read mm. i was a teenager and i just remember being so absorbed in that and just one of those things where the characters really stick with you you know and mm -hmm. Uh, I, I still have like mental images of Auk and Chenille and, and Silk, um, Oreb that were formed in that time. Um, so I feel, feel that as my kind of the, the first real foothold I got in Wolf was, was through Long Sun. What was the, what was your reaction? I just, I remember being like amazed at the world building that was going on. I wouldn't have used that term at that time. Right. But mm -hmm. it was just. The thing that's always got me about Wolf was the ability to have three things going on at the same time. You have those sort of deep mysteries underneath. You have the surface level wonder of the world, which kind of ties into those mysteries, right? Like everyone just treats this giant uh, light that's that's going through the middle of right. this generation starship as oh that's the sun that's everyday stuff right and <laughs> it's it's a it's very Chestertonian of Wolf right like you you, you he, Chesterton has this line about how you um, the fairy tales have the the rivers run with wine so that for one split second you can remember that they actually run with water right <laughs> and that that's amazing that's wonderful and like you know having a round sun is amazing and incredible and and so I think he does that so well. But then also the story's just gripping, right? I mean, mm -hmm. the characters are people you can get into and sort of follow. And um, so I remember most of all, actually, the very plot level, like being caught up. I don't think I, I picked up on almost any of the, the subtext mm -hmm. um, or the, the who to trust, who not to trust kind of things that were going on when I read it later. But I do remember being carried along you know with with the uh, with the story and feeling satisfied there was more under there right I'd, I'd heard enough from my father to know like you know i remember going through that first page and that he pointed out to me the the ship rock that's that's supposed to not right and how much is is right. embedded in that one phrase right so yeah i i had a very positive reaction right and but it was also nowhere near exhaustive right like and i knew that and i was fine with it and i was i remember just i think our family would just reread them every time they came out we'd read the first and the, then we'd read nightside lake nightside lake call day right so yeah that's the other thing like i've always felt rereading wolf was natural mm -hmm. enjoyable like never a chore that's a really good introduction i think it could have gone bad you know i, I could imagine that if 
if my kids were reading <laughs> Long Sun for the first time, I'd be over there, over their shoulders, saying, and look at this, and look at this, and look at this. <laughs> <laughs> if they would hate it by the end of the story. Yeah. But... <laughs> Favorite novel or short story, either or both? Either or both. So, um, I think favorite novel i was thinking about this i actually enjoy the book of the new sun the most i think there's there's so many scenes i i just treasure and i'm oh this one's coming up again right and phrases mm-hmm. and paragraphs but i have a real soft spot for almost too soft for for the wizard knight <laughs> and it's it's because again at the time of my life i was reading it i was i was studying abroad i was you know kind of on my own and And I just remember I had this ritual that every week after my studies were done, I'd go down to this one cafe and I'd order the same drink every time and I'd sit there and I'd read one chapter. And that's all I allowed myself, one chapter of the night. And I just, I actually wrote Wolf a letter about this experience, just, you know, being a young man reading this like story about a young man and like, but it, it was. It was powerful. It was one of those things, you know, where you're not disappointed, right? Like I wanted, I wanted this to be a good book and, and it was, it was really, <laughs> really satisfying. And there, there were the things there. I just loved the, that part in particular about that book, about growing up and about manhood. And I think those elements of the book are in some ways, right? In there's reasons to, to look at them askance, even in the book, but, but I love the vision of, you know, puberty as the fairy queen slept with me. And now all of a sudden I'm this huge hulking guy. What, what, what happened? Right. Like, and then, you know, he keeps like going to people and saying like, I'm actually a boy inside. I know what you mean. Right. Like that's, it's. <laughs> oh yeah. Trust me. I'm a lot older than you. And I have very, uh, that, that sensation is very real. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I love that stuff. I love how detailed it got, you know, foining my, my introduction to, to, uh, to sword fighting <laughs> terminology, the, the, the dog, right. All those things. Like there's just so many moments in that book, which are just, um, uh, again, mm-hmm. in some ways tender, right? Like when they think guilt is the dog, like they, they meet that angel essentially. And, and, uh, the angel says to Abel, your dog likes me better than you. Right. Does that bother you? And, and Abel says, I like you better than me. Right. Like, I, I think <laughs> a lot of that stuck with me as as moments of kind of, of gallantry written with a with a foot in in reality. Right. That's not inaccessible. Like I actually I, I forgot to mm-hmm. say this, like the the poem that he gets, he puts at the beginning of that uh, as the, the epigraph by uh, Dunsany. Uh, the knights, I, I never succeeded, but it had been an ambition to memorize it just because it was so perfect for that book, right? The, so, yeah, so I have a, <laughs> I have a very soft spot for, for that book and, and what it meant. Favorite wolf word. I was really struggling with this one <laughs> <laughs> because the, I love the way wolf uses words, but I was struggling. Like, like, what do you have in mind? Maybe that'll help me. Just... Jordan Flato said Fulligen. Yeah. Swanwick said the same thing. That's kind of where I was going to. So I'm trying to do something different. But... Someone else uh, said the name that, whatever name c real name is. And yeah. I think that's Syrinx, honestly, uh, which is like the original spelling for Siren. But that's my own theory. Um. I, that's actually a pretty good word. I love the spelling. I love the spellings in Long Sun and Short Sun of like um Yeah. Well he uses he just he takes the original Greek spelling of, of the gods mm. and then just employs them directly. I love that. So anything? <laughs> Let me see if there's I'm trying to come up with, with something that would be one one word, right? That would um I think I encountered Baudelaire, Baudelaire oh, yeah. um, through Wolf, and I just love the way that rolls off my. Yeah, head. I mean, I'll say this is the problem. It's like you look and you're like, ah, that's that's obvious. But like, 
I mean, I I always thought the the um, uh, Aljabo was a like the right name for that. Yeah, that animal. That's actually something my father told me about when I was seven or eight. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Just some nightmare fodder for you. Um, but Aljabo is out. Al- Alzebo. That's see, everyone's got a different pronunciation. That's the another great thing about that word. It's a different way of doing it. Yeah. Um, um, and I and I just uh, recently recorded chapter three of, of Claw? Uh, Claw the Conciliator with Craig, and yeah, I took a deep dive into the word for Alzebo. Uh, I just love that. Yeah, I do yeah, like yeah. that word a lot because I like I like the words that have a lot of history deep in them. Mm. And where you can really, you really get a sense that of Wolf digging into the etymology and often relating it directly to him. I mean, not certainly for the uh, El Sabo, which you can find uh, to Sabo or Zabo in in the Bible, and it, it just means hyena, or valley of. It's in a in a place named Valley of the Hyenas. So it's it's basically just a word for for hyena, but. It's, I mean, just the word hyena, however, I mean, th- there are theories that they were crosses between lions and wolves, between, I love the way you say, oh, yeah, I can see why this really appealed to him. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I had a, you know, kind of more to put in that. I think that's just for me. Maybe it's, it's one of the favorites because it's, again, it has that long, like, I, that right pronunciation is what my father said to me when I was. That was small, <laughs> um, but um, yeah, which is is itself interesting, right? About I think one of the things I like about Wolf's words is, you know, that attention to how people are pronouncing things, and that's actually been I, mm-hmm. as as you know, that's one of the things I, that really caught my attention early on in the, the podcast was just thinking about these things because there are a lot of Greek words in the Book of the New Sun. I've studied Greek and Latin, and so I've I've been paying more attention to them. But um, I think I mentioned this on the mm-hmm. Facebook group, but but like I actually saw Wolf's pronunciation in Castle of the Otter for, for what I would have said Askians, right? For, yes. For the, the people in the north. He says Asians, right? Which is... Oh, does he? I always say Asians, although I think I always felt like it was wrong. It's hard for, yeah. me, for me to stop, but... Uh... But but that's the thing, right? Is that like, it depend- if you're going to pronounce it in Greek or in Latinized Greek or any of that, like it would be Askians, right? Like shadowless. Right. But, uh, but he's an autodidact, which is an issue well, of trying to delve into what, yes. it, it, when you try try and figure out, okay, well, this is actually historically this and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And, but you have to, you have to add into that mix. What did Wolf think about it? What did Gene think yeah. about this particular word? And the other, the other thing, which is, I I think I, it would not surprise me if Wolf would would uh, mm-hmm. prioritize the anglicized pronunciation, right? I yeah. think there's a lot of places where it's like, well, this thing has history, but this is how people pronounce it, right? You think about the pronunciation of of Latin in the the Book of Common Prayer, right, where, where you things are collects, right, and the jubilate and and things that are oh, what's the other one? There's there's another one which is. Uh, <laughs> just totally mangles the latin but it's just it's the correct english right. pronunciation of that word right it's been pronounced that way for hundreds of years that doesn't that wouldn't surprise me either if he was deliberately um saying how would we pronounce that if we um i'll actually i, I realize i have one more thing that you could put as a favorite word which is i and it's that i in exodus from the long sun that horn drops in the back half of the book where he reveals himself as the narrator. Uh, and I say that because yeah. I actually came across, I was trying to show it to someone and I, I when I was in college and I, I remember I opened up the book and found the passage and it was the, I think it was the science fiction book club edition where they corrected it to he uh-huh. uh, or, or horn or whatever it was. Right. Uh, and I actually cut out a post-it note in the correct size and like, put it in the book and, and um, <laughs> wrote I on it so that it would be corrected for the, the future. So, um, but so that's, that's another option. 
Yeah, apparently he was really angry over that. It was really because he had every right to be angry over that. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a big. So it's like putting a little annotation. Oh, by the way, this is Horn. Right. <laughs> All right. Personal non-consensus theory about a wolf story or your favorite one. Um. So I guess. See, I, I blew my Wizard Knight wad already. I should have told you about the Detective Dreams or something like that instead. But I'll go back to Wizard Knight for a second because I think the thing which is probably most, I found most known consensus about the way I approach Wolf is that I've never been really good at sussing out the hard stuff in Wolf. I either need a lot of help or it takes me, you know, 20 readings to sort of get down to what's, to something that's going on so mm -hmm. i i look at things that that you do or or, or mark armini does and uh, and i say like wow like i i don't even know how to how to go there <laughs> but i think there's actually a lot going on on the surface that can lead you in the right direction and i think that's that's probably my most non-consensus thing to say right that <laughs> i think a lot of times we're talking about how there is no theory. <laughs> well, you know, there, I think there are, but but I don't want to lose that. I think that's kind of it's a full package for Wolf, right? I don't think he ever right. wanted to write something that wasn't that wasn't good to read, right? If it's going to be a um, some sort of parody, let's say of a of a Knight's Tale, then it's going to be a good Knight's Tale, right? It's going to be a really good one, and I think that that element actually means that there there's a lot going on, right? Mm -hmm. Like I just think about how much. Um, passages where Severian is just reflecting in one way or the other, right? Like I think about the the passage where he's just walked out of Thrax and is lying under the stars, right? And he's just so perturbed by the thought that someone might have deliberately right. arranged the stars to be constellations. Like he's just he can't sleep because he like he's now bothered by this, right? Um does like I think there's a lot going on in that passage beyond all the what's really going on with the timey wimey stuff. What's, you know, what, what is Severian's purpose? How much is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? Like there's just some real depth there. So I guess, you know, I'm, I'm overplaying how, how much I'm not good at that stuff. What I'm good at is the literary stuff, mm -hmm. right? Like in, and seeing the, the references and, but I think that that'll take you a long way. Like when, you know, when I'm saying surface level, like I'm, I'm still like, I'm still reading passages of these things to say, Oh, that's a reference to, to Varro. Right. <laughs> like, but um, I think sometimes the, the shape of those and, and the pattern of those will, will carry you pretty far to understanding the, the sense. And I, I think it's a mistake mm -hmm. to, to be too cynical about the, the surface reading of, of Wolf. That's where I, you just remind me how much I'm going to enjoy that uh, uh, Lichter oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, passage yeah. when we get to it. It's, it's wonderful. <laughs> most frustrating, this may be uh, a dead end here, most frustrating yeah. mystery in a wolf story. <laughs> any. Yeah, no, exactly. They were all very frustrating for me. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I recently spent some time trying to do uh, Severian's mom. So I've joined the crew of many of those people who have tried and failed. Um, yes. <laughs> but I actually, I'll say this one. I, again, I didn't try very hard on this, but I remember reading endangered species when I was, when I was a teenager as well. I remember just Suzanne Delage just drove me nuts. <laughs> what just happened in this story? I know. Yeah. Okay. It's all on the surface there. <laughs> it's, it's very clear. And yet, <laughs> what am I missing? Because I, did, I didn't get it. Um, yeah. So, so that we could, we could throw that one in too. That's, That's a good one. That's a good one. Well, what you're describing there is probably why uh, The Book of the New Sun was never my favorite wolf story because of the uncomfortable mm. feeling it gave me of things happening just outside my my view. You know, like in a horror movie where someone walks in a... Oh, uh, you know, a dark house, and they can hear the pitter patter of children's feet and laughing just outside of view. That's the way I felt the whole way out time I was reading the book of the new sun, and in some sense, that's what I'm trying to work through when I'm talking to Craig. Yeah, just the the sense that there's there's something there, and right. it's it's just 
just out of view. And um, yeah, and that's an interesting one because it's not like the the lack of consensus is really like it, that's that's one of those moments where we feel like a, a preview of like late wolf right with the that um mm-hmm. that sense of like i just can't there's just too many like loose <laughs> ends to to uh to figure it all out um yeah i realized i know i know you got more material than you need but can i say something about the detective of dreams on yeah yeah come bring it on i just want to bring it because i think I think this story, I mentioned this on the Facebook group when people asked, asked I, I forget if you or, or someone else asked about favorite stories, but I wanted to mention it because I, I, I remember I actually gave a, a packet of Gene Wolfe stories to a friend and I, I was reviewing it um, for this to, to, to look at what I said. And I, I actually didn't give that that story or, or Shield of Mars, which Shields of Mars, which would have been my, my two favorite stories. But I described it, uh, Detective Dreams as, as a uh, jet fuel for my rocket pack <laughs> when I was young. And I, I just think that story is such a masterpiece of, of, of sort of laying, putting plots together, right? So that the retelling of the parables of Jesus, which, are in, which it happens in that story, mm-hmm. is done so subtly, right? And everyone's perspective is the person who's like feels threatened by it, right? And it's such a unique kind of way to approach it. I just remember being inspired by that. And moreover, mm-hmm. the uh, the very beginning of it, I've got my best of wolf here. I'm trying to find it. There's this part where he's um, been uh, offered the the detective has been offered the job to try to figure this out, right? And we get this this paragraph where he says. Very well, then, he said, and so saying, launched into one of the most astonishing relations. No, the most astonishing relations I've ever been privileged to hear. Even I, who had at first hand the account of the man who found Paulette Renan with a quid seed still lodged in her throat, who had received Captain Brott's testimony concerning his finds amid the Antarctic ice, who had heard the history of the woman called Joan O'Neill, who lived for two years behind a painting of herself in the Louvre from her own lips. <laughs> Even I sat like a child while this man spoke, right? So we hear Wolf cast out three story ideas that he then write, <laughs> you know, on, just as window dressing for this moment. And it's, it's beautiful. It's right. just like it sets this this tone for storytelling. That's a that's a great story. I love that one. Yeah. All right. All right, Marcos. Thank you. Thank you. This was great. Good. Now, it's, now I have a voice to put to your uh, post. Yeah. Absolutely. I know. I'm, I'm sorry. I know I, I'm, I'm talking. A, I don't get to talk about Wolf very much. It's, <laughs> you know, I, I originally imagined this as being like five minutes long, but none of them are that long. And it's primarily my fault because I, I just, well, tell me something else. Tell me this. Tell me this. So, I mean, if I, if I was want, really wanting to keep them short, then I would say, give me your answer. No, you're right. I would not, I would avoid feedback. I would avoid uh, responding back, but that's really not something i can do apparently awesome okay no thank you no thank you that was great i really appreciate it no thank you for taking the time letting me go on <laughs> and uh for you know for doing this it's really um my father was an earth lister back in the day and and i sort of like was a hanger on and but i never what was his name uh fernando Gobea. fernando i think i remember fernando yeah okay yeah so I'm actually on there too. I have a post or two, but they're very embarrassing, so don't look them up. Um, <laughs> I will look them up now. I know. Now you're going to look them up. But yeah, but this has been sort of like very satisfying for me to sort of be able to engage with this community when I'm uh, kind of in a better place to do it. So uh, appreciate your work on it and uh, for you guys being so affable with everyone. And, and it's, it's been a really good good space to to reread reread wolf so all right (laughs) well thank you have a great day (laughs) all right bye the riders lord dunsany who treads those level lands of gold the level fields of mist and air and rolling mountains manifold and towers of twilight over there No mortal foot upon them strays, no archer in the tower dwells, 
But feet too airy for our ways go up and down their hills and dells. The people out of old romance, and people that have never been, and those that on the border dance between old history and between resounding fable as the king who held his court at Camelot. There Guinevere is wandering, and there the knight, Sir Lancelot, and by yon precipice of white, as steep as Roncival and more, within an inch of fancy sight, Roland the peerless rides to war, and just the tip of Quixote's spear, the greatest of them all by far, is surely visible from here. But no, it is the evening star. This was again entirely sponsored by the patrons of the Rereading Wolf podcast. You can go to patreon.com slash rereadingwolf to play a part in bringing other amazing things like this into the world. And if you want to take on the five questions with us, reach out to us by email or one of the other methods listed in the show notes of this episode.